But the first and foremost reason why Taiji would prefer to do a foam slow for combat reasons uh, is basically you know to opening off your joints. If you don't know what that is, right, I've already made many videos in the past talking about the opening of the joint, but the particular one that you should watch if you haven't already is, is the, uh, you know, the overview on the four fundamental forces. Uh, but in short, basically, in all internal martial arts, we want to open our joints, especially the shoulder blades, the hip joint, the waist joint, and also the flexibility of the spine. And there are other smaller joints too, but these are the main ones that we often talk about. Now, in other internal martial arts, for example, in Xing Yi, you open your joint by doing the Santi stomp, right? If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. You know, the fact that they, you know, stretch out their arms, they have the step, those, those things kind of help you to, you know, to open your joint. Uh, you know, in Bagua, they, they also have a similar hand posture, but they will do a walking, you know, they have that one, they have the other ones. They're different ones for, for the, you know, different purposes, but it ultimately all serves to open your joint. In Yi Xuan Wai, we have the well-known uh, Hun Yuan stance, the Ji Xi stance, and again, so out of all these you know, examples that I've just given, the reason they want to hold a stance for an extensive amount of time, right? for example, my old Yi Chuan teacher would require me to hold my stance for an hour. Now, some people often you know, mistake this to be you know, training arm strength. Well, it's not completely wrong to say that, but it's not the type of strength that people usually associate, because if you hold up your arm for, like, for, for an hour, Normally people think you're training your, your muscle strength, right? You're holding your arm for muscle clear training and your muscle is going to what make you strong. But in each one, any other internal martial art, right? The goal is actually to hold up the arm like this so that you can slowly tie out your muscle and once that happens, it will slowly drag open your joint. So why would you need to hold out your arm for an extensive amount of time to open up your joint, right? It's because Opening of joint is not like, you know, uh, stretching of your ligament, right? With your ligament, like, you know, your legs, when you're kicking, you have to keep pulling, 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 and then gradually it, it becomes more supple. But for example, um, you know, range of motion on the shoulder blade, you can't just go and pull it open or stretch it open. And when you do that, you're going to be, you know, you're going to risk yourself of actually injuring that joint, right? I've heard of people who do it the wrong way, and then eventually they shoulder, you know, have a chronic dislocation tendency. Like every time they, they, they stretch the shoulder, it pops out. So you don't want that kind of thing to happen to you. So just the opening of any of the, the joints can't be done forcefully like, you know, doing leg stretches. Same with the waist, right? The waist is such a complicated joint. If you just, you know, forcefully try to, to increase a range of motion, you're probably going to end up with like, you know, spinal injuries later on in life. So those are not how you do it. But, in a similar way to how you know uh, Chinese opera singers or well, uh, students try to split, what they do is they will basically put them in a semi-split position for a long period of time. Right? According to my dad, who used to do uh, Beijing opera, you know they will have to sit in a semi-split position for like half an hour to an hour. And the reason they do it for that long is because in the beginning, when you're in a semi-split position, your muscles will basically hold you up to together. But as time goes on, your muscle tires out. And eventually, you know, they give in and gravity pulls you down. And at, the, at which point, the muscles are no longer strong enough to counteract uh, the, you know, your tendon. And so the tendon basically just will take the ligament, will slowly get pulled further. Right? So if your muscle is so strong, when you're in a split, it basically pulls it together. But once your muscle is tired out, then gravity will basically act upon your tendon and ligament and you, you know, you'll be forced to go down. So that's a similar idea why internal martial arts you start trying to open up the joint. Because if you just want to open up your joint, your muscles are going to be in the way. But, as you, you know, but if you hold that stance for half an hour, you know, maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes in, your muscle kind of gets tired, eventually your muscle tires out. And once that happens, then there's a higher chance of the muscle not getting in the way of your exercising the, you know, the, the, the tendon that's holding your joints together. So that's basically the idea behind why you need extensive for a long period of time to open up your shoulder blade, your hips, your waist, etc. And you know, so basically, and that's why, you know, if you do e each one stance, for example, and you are tense the whole time, you know, even if you hold them for an hour, and you do it for years, you never reach a point where your uh, shoulder blade and everything is actually stretched open. 
So there are a lot of people who have been you know, training each one pretty intensively for like six, seven years, and then they don't actually reach the same type of end result as other people. And you know, and this is most likely why it's because they are not actually actively relaxing the the joints. They 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 think it's a you know it's a muscular training rather than a training where you want to get rid of your your muscles as an obstacle and stretch out your joint. So how does that relate to Tai Chi, right? So basically in Tai Chi, we don't have those kind of stance training. I mean, in my lineage, we have the Wuji stance, but as, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the Wuji stance is actually invented by my grandmaster. Originally, in the Yang family, Tai Chi does not have a stance. So how, do you, how does they reconcile this, right, with other internal martial arts who actually both everything on the stance? Basically in Tai Chi, the form itself is the stance, right? If you are doing a Tai Chi form in the correct speed, which will usually take 30 minutes to, to, to 45 minutes, or in my system, right, we're required to do the form repeating motions. So basically, we don't do a form by counting beginning to end. We just repeat a set of motion over and over and over until you reach 40 minutes minimum or two hours is actually the benchmark. So we have, we'll actually have to do the form repeatedly nonstop for two hours. So, and once you start doing that, it serves the exact same function as doing a stance and more, right? Because you're also doing motions. So, but while you're getting these other benefits like learning the motion application, you're also training exactly like what stance is trying to achieve. And that's why Tai Chi being a member of the internal system doesn't specifically focus on stance and yet can still achieve the same results of opening up of the joints. And this is obviously something that you cannot achieve if you're doing the form fast. The second reason for Tai Chi to do the form slow is basically to learn how to build and use structure. So without Eric being here, I can't really explain this in a virtual way, but I have talked about this in past videos as well, right? So essentially in internal martial arts, the whole idea is that you want to hold resistance with your skeleton frame, what we call structure, and not actively engage in muscles. And this is very hard for untrained people, because the moment they hold up their arm, or the moment they, they meet resistance, the muscle is engaged, and internal martial arts don't want that. The reason we don't want that, and there's many other reasons why we don't. Firstly, you know, it's, it's less efficient. If you, if you tense up your muscles, uh, you know, you're also holding back your own force, you burn up more oxygen, you get tiring quicker. So there's a lot of reasons why you don't want to do that. But another important one is that if you tense up your muscles already, you don't have the ability to create more force. Or the idea of you know, internal martial arts, especially in Tai Chi and Yi Quan, you want to if somebody is, is coming at you with a force, you want to be able to absorb that with your skeleton structure without actively engaging in your muscles. And then once you fully absorb that, then you engage in, in the muscle tension and you can attack back. Well, I talked about this in my videos last year when I'm talking about the, you know, the application to various Tai Chi moves. Right? I talked about the four stages right, in, in, in Tai Chi combat, where you have to basically engage, you have to basically dissolve his incoming force, seize his balance, and then hit him back. So to do that, at the first engagement, you have to be relaxed. But you have to be relaxed in a way that your arm is not giving in, it's not flimsy, right? If your arm is totally relaxed in a conventional sense, a guy's gonna hit you and he's gonna cave in, and you're gonna get hit. But you also don't want it to be so tense that you don't have to follow up. So therefore, it has to be in a, in, a, in a type of situation where your skeleton structure, um, including your, your, your joint are extended, that they are a solid rigid structure that absorbs the incoming force without you losing balance or structure. At the same time, once his force, or just as his force, you know, finish off or dies down, immediately you can engage in your muscle and you know, skeletal mechanic to generate a counter force that hit him before he can be ready to retaliate with another force. So that's another reason why Tai Chi had to do his form slow, right? Because if you're doing things fast, it's very hard to disengage certain muscle groups and to relax as much as you can, right? I have to clarify, because you've seen some people get confused, you know, that when you're moving your arms around, it's impossible to relax all muscles. Some muscle is always going to be engaged. The idea here is isn't that you don't use muscles at all, 
but if you use a minimum amount of muscle and have more extra muscles that you are not engaged in, that you can engage in at the moment of notice. And so that's the, 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 the rationale behind why in Tai Chi you're doing your form very slow for excess, exceedingly long period of time and at the whole time you're trying to tell yourself to relax. You should basically be able to separate the muscles you absolutely need when you are moving about and sparing the muscles that you don't actually need and then you can engage them later when you want to hit back. I guess I should also point out that uh, you know, just alone is not enough for combat, right? You have to also train the active engagement of those extra muscle, right? what we call basically power generation. So you do need to actually do those training as well, but those training are typically not done while doing the form. The form is basically to pave the way, both the foundation for opening up the joints and the relaxing of, of the muscle groups and, use, and getting used to how to move yourself around with skeletal structure. And then later the other exercises that we engage in that teaches you to basically you know, flex the extra muscles and to generate power. Um, and which is why right, people who just do the form can't fight because that's actually not the full story. Uh, that's only you know, the foundation and, and, and that's something that often people seem to get confused with. And lastly, the third reason why Tai Chi would want to do form slow for combat purpose is basically to train the pathway of mechanics to power generation. You might think, you know, just like I just said that power generation isn't trend in, in the form. What that means is the actual activation of the muscle group is no trend in the form. But the mechanic behind how power is generated is very much so trend in the form. Right? So at, at some point in the training, obviously not in the beginning you don't, you don't learn this, but once you advance to a certain stage, then, you know, for in my case, my master will then start explaining to me you know, how does the force start from the ground, right? I mean, if you know Tai Chi's, uh, you know, manuscript, you will know there's basically this thing about, you know, the root is in the, is in the foot, it's generated by the legs, and the, controlled by the waist, eventually it travels through the body, and get, you know, get sent out through the fingers, right? So that's like the, you know, in a nutshell, what Tai Chi is talking about when it comes to the, pr the procedure, or the pathway of the power, power generation. So, starting from picking up your foot, you move forward and you put your foot down and you shift your weight across. That very moment you're really starting to train uh, what we call rebound force, right? one of the four fundamental forces of, of, of internal. And once your force goes down, then you have to feel how that force bounces back up and how that you know, fit into your, ro your hip ro rotation and how that basically you know, load up your waist whether you're, you know, concaving your waist or releasing your waist, and how that passes through your spine, you know, through each vertebrae, and how that, you know, reaches the, the middle back, and how that basically activates your shoulder blade, and how the shoulder blade, you know, relaxes your shoulders, sink your elbow, engage your wrist, finger, so, well, and as then you play up your head, right? Uh, shooting thing, one of the other, the, the 10 criteria to Tai Chi. So all of these happen in a set sequence and that sequence is repeated every time we do a particular move in Tai Chi. So when I'm doing single work I'm basically doing the movement while following this particular sequence and then when I go to you know white crane again and I'm running from the sequence again from the foot we rebound all the way up to the head and to the arm to the hand and when I'm doing brushing knee again so every move I'm doing I'm repeating these sequences and the reason why I want to do it slow is because, yeah, you can imagine, right, if you're just doing the move fast, you're not going to have the time to run through these sequence with your body and your, you know, your brain, checking out each part of the sequence, whether you're doing it correctly or, or, or not. Which is why, essentially, in, 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 in almost all martial arts, you can start off learning the movement slow, right? You don't come up to, to any martial art, as far as I know, uh, and the, the teacher will just tell you to throw punches as fast as, as you can, because, you know, when you do that, you have bad forms. And then once, once those, those bad forms, you know, becomes a habit, it's very hard to get rid of them. So you always kind of want to do things slow, so you can check whether, you know, you are throwing your punches correctly. You, you know, whether it's karate, boxing, or whatever you do, right? Everything kind of starts slow. So in Taiji as well, except that in Taiji, uh, what we try to do is, is even more complicated. And that's not to say it's better in any way, right? Whether it's better or not, it's opinionated. But it is more complicated. 
you know, with the, you know, the way of how we want every joint to participate in a specific way before the final hit is being sent out. Whether this overcomplicated power generation mechanic uh, is practical is another story that we're not going to discuss in this video. But if we just under the context of what Taiji is trying to do, it has to do it in a very slow manner. You cannot achieve this mechanic if you come off doing things fast. So in that sense, you can almost view Tai G form like shadow boxing in, in boxing training, right? I think for some time back in the 80s and 70s, Tai G was called shadow boxing in the West. But obviously it's slightly different, but the idea is the same, right? In boxing, when you're doing shadow boxing, you're basically self-analyzing to see if your motions are fluid, if you're doing things correctly and trying to find fault. Uh, you know, and that's pretty much what you're doing in Tai Chi as well. You're basically doing things slow so you can constantly be aware of what each part of the body is doing and see if you're running through the, the, those procedures correctly. And if you're not, then you, know, you go back and you correct yourself. And, th and that's very important for the you know, ultimate combat approach to Tai Chi. And that is why you have to do the form slow for quite a long time, right? I mean, in my lineage, we pretty much do the form slow for at least three to five years before my master will probably think that you are ready. You know, again, whether that is constructive or efficient is a different argument, but under the context of Tai Chi, that's what you basically have to do until you basically mastered this process so well that it goes from an explicit cognitive function to an implicit one, right? So what, that, what I mean by that is basically, you know, imagine when you first learn how to drive, right? Everything is, is new, you have to constantly think about, you know, okay, I need to like, you know, release my handbrake, I need to like, you know, put down the clutch, put on my gear, gradually, you know, let go of the clutch, and then, you know, give some gas, and everything, you have to basically constantly think about them. But you know, eventually after you're driving for a little while, everything becomes so, uh, implicit, right? You don't really think about it. You can basically drive and basically talk to someone and get in a, in, in a conversation or even do other things. Your body automatically, you know, put down the handbrake. You know, there's the a time where I lock my car, I'm like, you know, I put on my handbrake and I check and, and yeah, I put my handbrake. It's, it's, auto, it's autonomic, it's implicit. So that's the idea behind Tai Chi as well, right? We want to basically, after repeating these processes of each body joint, how they fit into the, the, the strike, so long that eventually, you know, when doing something fast, our, our body basically automatically goes into that behavior. And then ultimately you can basically do a strike in Tai Chi uh, fast and still have all the correct mechanics. It's just that, you know, that final stage, we don't train it through doing the form, which is why we don't see a reason why the form should be done fast. And that's why Tai Chi does its form extremely slow. Alright, so I hope this has made sense. You know, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't get Eric to demonstrate with me, so some of these motion stuff might be hard to understand. Uh, but you know, you can check my previous videos when it comes to shoulder joints and structural force, or you know, or my Taiji deconstruction videos about you know how how this mechanic might fit into different techniques. And for my Patreon supporters, right, if you feel that uh, you know I should go into more detail on any of the elements that I've covered today, do send me a message. And I'll probably you know, get Eric to demonstrate with me for you guys so you can basically understand what I'm trying to say better. You see, um, coming from my perspective, right, uh, I sometimes don't know what doesn't make sense to my viewers, especially my Patreon supporters. So, you know, so, so I can't, I mean, I try, but I can't always cover everything that I think you should try to understand. So, so anything that you don't understand or you think I should further explain or, or clarify, do pop me a message and I'll definitely make a plan to make a video to specifically explore those areas. Alright, so I hope this video has made sense to you guys and if you're not, you, know, you can also comment under the video and I'll basically try to explain things for you. And if you do find my videos interesting and informative, do consider to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you can support me on Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. I do have a whole selection of Patreon exclusive videos where I go into more detailed mechanics and, and explain internal martial arts, whether it's Yichuan, Tai Chi, or Wuxing Tongbei, from a more scientific approach, right, to analyze the actual anatomical mechanics that enables various different feats that we are doing in internal martial art. And as always, a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for your support. It makes me, you know, have more motivation in making these videos to know that there are people out there who appreciate 
me trying to share the knowledge. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm the best in the in the industry, but I do think I have some perspective that you know other people might not necessarily uh, be able to communicate, and that's why I try to make videos to help you guys better understand into the martial art from a scientific perspective. And last year, I want to welcome my new Patreon members, including Isaac Bone, Kung Fu Fan, Iola, and welcome back all member Eric, and a special welcome to my top tier supporter, including my cords and human optimization. And I do apologize for not uh, doing one of these in quite some time because I haven't made a public video in, in a while. So for, the, so for some of you who have already joined my Patreon for over two months, I do apologize for the, the delay. And as always, if you have any questions on current content or suggestions for future contents, always feel free to message me at any time. And I'll definitely try to get back to you as soon as possible. I have to admit in the past few weeks, I haven't been checking my uh, emails and messages because I had like three essays I had to write and three tests including finals. So there's a lot of preparation and stuff I had to do for, for the finals. Uh, so that I haven't, I basically cut off myself from all kind of social media, including emails. Uh, but yeah, but now that those are down, I'll be more active in replying your messages. So I do apologize for not being responsive for the past couple of weeks. And there will be a new Patreon videos coming up very soon where I'll be exploring further into the mechanics of uh, mid punch in Wuxing Tong Bay. So if that's what you're interested in, then you know, stay in tune and that video will probably come out in the next few days. Thanks for watching Trans the Martial channel and I'll see you next time. <laughs>